Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all had fun watching AEW Revolution and are ready for some big business. Sting got his bittersweet moment, and The Rock never fails to keep us excited, even now doing his promos via Instagram. The sports entertainment we love is at its highest right now, so without further ado, let's get ready to rumble. So starting off our show today, our first topic, last week on SmackDown, The Rock came on, proposed that not he faced Cody Rhodes one-on-one, but him and Roman Reigns faced Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins on WrestleMania night one in a tag team match where if Roman and The Rock win, the match of Cody and Roman is bloodline rules, which means everything goes. But if Cody and Seth win, then that match is free of the bloodline, no interruptions whatsoever, giving Cody a true shot to finish his story. And I mean, we kind of expected this from the press conference. It's a good story that they're building up to though. Having The Rock back, but not having him going against Roman for the title, they're doing very well with that. Having him as a heel character kind of with Roman. The one thing I didn't quite get was him acknowledging Roman because I thought they'd kind of build more to that, but I'm thinking after WrestleMania they build towards Roman versus Rock and have him not acknowledge him and then have that head-of-the-table match, but that's going to be title-free. And it's really a toss-up for who wins Cody Roman right now, but I'm thinking more towards Cody, but... That's something we have to think about in a later date when we get more information as to what is going to go on in this match. But moving on here to AW and AW Revolution, Darby Allen showed us why we should truly not do this at home. Darby Allen, off of the top of a ladder in the ring, jumps onto, I think, five chairs and a, a piece of glass, like a big piece of glass. And my God, his back was... I don't know if I can even explain it, but you'd have to search it up. But Darby Allen's back after jumping was horrendous. I don't know why he did the spot generally. I know it's Sting's last match. You want to give him something to remember. That's something a little bit too vivid to remember, though. So, I mean, it's good wrestling, but at the same time, you can't hurt yourself that much because that will result in long-term injuries. And I think that's... What Darby Allen's going to end up having, sadly, long-term injuries as he gets older because he's done way too many risky spots in wrestling, and it's going to catch up to him at some point. But still on AEW Revolution, Kyle O'Reilly returns after two years back to wrestling in AEW as after Roderick Strong wins the international title, he shows up behind Roderick Strong, hugs him, then Roderick Strong and the kingdom give him the Undisputed Kingdom shirt. And he's about to put it on, but he just hands it back to them. And this could be a good story because you know Kyle O'Reilly, the original one in Roderick Strong and Adam Cole's faction, now with the Kingdom kind of taking the role of him and Bobby Fish as the tag team. I think it's going to kind of sway some opinions here. And I think, honestly, this could be a catalyst for Roderick Strong to turn face and get out of there. I don't think it's going to happen like soon. I think we have to wait a while and let it play out. But it's going to be a good storyline, and it's good to have Kyle O'Reilly back in wrestling. Now, back to WWE, or more so Instagram. The Rock put out a 22-minute promo on his Instagram at Cody Rhodes, at Seth Rollins, at basically everyone in that situation. And, I mean, it was an amazing promo, and The Rock just never fails to keep us on our heels, even when wrestling is not on. I mean... The dude just casually puts out a 22-minute promo on Instagram. He has everyone watching it. I mean, he has a ton of followers on Instagram, so I'm sure every wrestling fan saw it. And, I mean, it was a great promo. He explained a lot of things more so in depth that hadn't been explained in depth on television. And I think that The Rock is one of the best in the business right now because his promo work in WWE... And now out of WWE is just it's flawless, and he's promoting the business so so well, and giving him that job on the TKO board truly was not a mistake, and that could also come into play as he stated in the promo that he could take Seth's title away if Seth interferes too much because he's his boss technically. Speaking of bosses and business, big business is just right around the corner next Wednesday, and we have confirmed so far. Samoa Joe versus Wardlow, the winner of the All-Star Scramble. Jay White versus Darby Allin. And I think we have a couple more matches, but typically a lot haven't been announced yet. I don't think it's going to be too much. I think it's mainly going to be 
this pay-per-view is mainly going to be an opening for Mercedes Monet to come into AEW. And, I mean, so many great signings coming into AEW. You see Will Ospreay having weekly matches. You see now Kazuchika Okada joining the Young Bucks in the Elite after they suspend Hangman and kick out Kenny Omega. And, I mean, all these signings are just really revitalizing this business. And it's giving AEW the old feel that it had, which is something that we hadn't reached in a while. But it's truly back. You can feel it. The amount of star power this roster has now, I'm not saying it can compete with WWE, but I'm saying it's in its own way such a special thing that they have going. And with the tag team division, Sting and Darby retain against the Young Bucks, but then reti Sting retires, so they have to relinquish the title. And now it's an AEW tag team tournament for who gets the titles. We have the Young Bucks entering. We have Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy entering. And we have so many other tag teams entering in this. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a great tournament. The tournaments are always very fun TV. But I think the Young Bucks do win it in this tournament. I just think with Okada now on their side that they're pretty much invincible. And I think they get the job done like they could in at Revolution. And I think they do win the titles. It was just Sting needed his good moment. So they get, AW gave it to him. Speaking on Sting's moment, though. Sting having an amazing last match. His two sons coming out in his entrance as different versions of himself from his career, from when he was younger. And, I mean, it's such a special moment when you're out there in your final match. Not only to win it, not only to have a great entrance, but to have your sons there. And Darby Allen, who he was kind of, who he was basically like a mentor to throughout his time in AEW. You know, it was just such a special moment, such a great time for wrestling fans. Such a bittersweet time for Sting, and we wish Sting the best on his retirement. You know, thank you for the four decades of amazing wrestling that you provided us. Back to WWE now. Like I mentioned earlier, The Rock acknowledging Roman Reigns? I mean, we just got into this storyline, and he's acknowledging him. There's so much to unpack here with this storyline, and you're just going to let that slip right now? I mean, I get it. They're probably going to have him be like that right now, and then later... After WrestleMania, he will not acknowledge him, and then they'll have this whole feud. But, I mean, it's just, it's just so confusing. I mean, it's an alpha move by Roman to stop Rock mid-sentence and tell him to acknowledge him. And I can respect that, but I don't know why The Rock would do it. Generally, there's no background to it. And I know now the bloodline is more powerful than ever with The Rock. But, I mean, The Rock, they really could have waited on that. Like, they wait with other things in wrestling, but... I mean, I guess they just wanted to go right at it, so we'll see how it plays out. And for Monday Night Raw, Gunther does not have an opponent at WrestleMania, but that will be decided this upcoming Monday in a gauntlet match with Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Ricochet versus Bronson Reed versus JD McDonough and versus Chad Gable. This will be a gauntlet match. It'll be... I think this is going to be a great match. I think this is going to be one of the better matches that we've seen on TV in a while. But I do have Chad Gable taking it home and going to WrestleMania to face Gunther. And I do have him dethroning Gunther. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't include any SmackDown competitors here. But, I mean, at the same time, I get it. The cross brand is kind of complicated to do. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be a great match. I think a bunch of guys on here deserving. I don't think JD McDonough's deserving. But that's just because he hasn't had much time on the main roster and many good matches on the main roster. Other than that, I think everyone here is deserving, even Ricochet, because Ricochet was the last person to hold the title before Gunther got it. So I think it's going to be a very entertaining match, a bunch of very entertaining wrestlers, and I think it's going to be great. I have Gable. You could have someone different. What, I all, what we all know is that we're all going to enjoy this match. Still here on Raw, Andrade, well, just Andrade, I guess, is making his in-ring re-debut, or he made it on Raw against Apollo Crews. And, you know, obviously Apollo Crews gets jobbed, so he lost. But, uh, you know, Andrade looked very great in the ring. That uh, spinning back elbow still looks as good as ever. And, you know, it feels like a different vibe to Andrade now. And it feels like he's truly found his home now. And they got to start pushing him for titles sooner or later. You know, I think if his match with Apollo was sooner and he got on a streak of winning, he could have been in that gauntlet match. But, you know, it's a little bit too late now. But otherwise, from that, I do think that Andrade is doing a great job in WWE with what he's doing. 
and I think they're going to start including him with uh, Judgment Day business very soon. But our final topic here on AEW was the title triple threat between Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, and Hangman Adam Page, where Hangman Adam Page tapped out from Samoa Joe just so Swerve couldn't win. I mean, what did we expect? The hatred between Hangman and Swerve was just too much to have a title put on one of them. And Samoa Joe obviously has been a great champion so far. We all respect his title run. But we didn't really expect a new champion here. It's like his second or third title defense, I think. And it was a great match. Swerve had a lot of opportunities to win. Hangman had some opportunities to win. But, you know, overall, Hangman had to just um, screw Swerve out of it just uh, for his self-ego. And this is a good job by Hangman because... Now the turn is coming for Hangman, and he's going to have to build up his own stable to go against the Elite, which is now the Young Bucks and Kazuchika Okada. And I think it's going to include someone like a Bounty Hunter Brian Keith, but, you know, it could just be Kenny Omega and someone else, which would be a great match, obviously, but Kenny Omega still has to heal up. So, you know, we got to see what, where time takes us. But, you know, overall, that'll be all for us this week. Don't worry, we'll be back with the newest wrestling news from WWE, AEW, and TNA. As always, we want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Chair Shot Wrestling.